And joining us right now on the Roth North Phoenix guest line, our good friend, NBA insider, CBSSports.com, Michael Kasky Blomain. Uh, Michael KB, as you might know him as well. What's up there, Michael? What's up, Mark? How's it going, man? Uh, it's going fantastic. I, I, I Here's the thing. I don't envy uh, a lot of writers whenever it comes time for a deadline, trade deadline or your deadlines in general, because I just I, – deadlines are weird. But anyway, when it comes to a trade deadline in the NBA, a lot of people are talking about James Harden and Ben Simmons, obviously. There's a lot of stuff out there. The first, the first deal I want to ask you about here is when it comes to Matisse Thibel and Tyrese Maxey being involved in a return for James Harden, what do you make of that even suggestion that's out there in the, you know, the, the reporting world? Well, I definitely don't blame the Nets for, you know, shooting for the stars and trying to get whatever they could get. I know, you know, from a direct team source that Tyrese Maxey is basically just off the table at this point right now. They're not interested in, in parting with him, which, you know, understandably so after how he's emerged this year. He's looked, you know, great, still only 21 years old, obviously still on that rookie contract. And, you know, I think really just starting to kind of scratch the surface of how good he could be. So, you know, at this point, he's he's off the table. Matisse is a guy that, you know, obviously they, they really don't want to have to part with, um, you know, especially with – you know, obviously Ben not being part of the lineup. Matisse has been there. Obviously, they're their number one perimeter defender. Um, their lockdown guy that they put on, you know, another team's best player every night. So they do not want to give up Matisse at all. If it came down to it and he was the sticking point between them landing James Harden uh, or not, I do think they would, you know, be inclined to to make that move. But, you know, that's one of the, the things right now that's kind of holding a deal up from potentially happening is, you know, how much would the Sixers include in addition to Ben Simmons? I'm not about to say that uh, Andre Drummond is going to be a guy that's going to hold up any deal for James Harden, but the Sixers literally have no rebounding right now as it is. What do you make of him being thrown into the mix as well as some are reporting? Yeah, I was more surprised about the Nets potentially having interest in, in Andre Drummond. Not that they couldn't use him, but it just kind of, you know, seemed like a random guy to throw in there. Uh, I do think if that was something that would help get the deal done, the Sixers could probably find another, not as, you know, Andre's been great behind Joel, but the, the best uh, backup he's had in his career so far. We said that about Dwight Howard last season. Uh, Andre's been even better in, in that role for the Sixers this season. So it would be a loss, but I think, you know, either between the buyout market or another trade, if, you know, that went through when Andre was gone, they could pick up, you know, a, another big guy that could provide some of the same production. And obviously that's, he's not the type of player that, you know, would prevent a deal from happening is if that is what Brooklyn actually wanted. I'm going to ask you the toughest question here, and I really do think this is the toughest one when it comes to Daryl Morey balancing trying to win right now and this year and not wasting this opportunity with Joel Embiid and Daryl Morey also realizing he could possibly get James Harden in the offseason and not have to trade a lot for him. I'd not have to trade anything for him, just sign him. So what do you – how do you balance that? If you're next to Daryl Morey, how are you balancing that? Yeah, that's the I think the biggest thing with the Sixers right now, from what I've been told with the front office, is they really think they have a legitimate chance of landing James Harden outright this summer when he hits free agency. And if that's your thought, you know, how much would you really be wanting to give up to get him for the rest of this season? But like you said, if they did add him for the rest of this season, you're talking about with him and Joel in an Eastern Conference that's pretty wide open. Mm -hmm. You know, you would think they would have a, a really legitimate shot to make a run at a title, which is, you know, obviously the ultimate goal of, of Maury and the rest of the front office. So I do think, you know, like I said, it's a situation where they'd be willing to include some compensation, whether it was, you know, maybe a Matisse, maybe Seth Curry or an Andre Drummond, Danny Green, probably a first round pick or two. To get the deal done, I think they just draw the bar at, at Tyrese Maxey because they look at that as a guy like, yeah, we would like to increase our title odds this year, but losing him would be detrimental long term. I mean, James Harden's already 33 years old. Uh, clearly, you know, he's still very good, has a lot of basketball left in him, but not the guy that he was when he was, you know, 25, 26, 27 in Houston putting up, you know, those MVP numbers. He's clearly on the kind of the, the down slant of his career. So I think the Sixers see Maxi as a guy that, you know, they can build with and could take a lot of pressure off Joel as he continues to develop his game. So, you know, I think anything's probably on the table and the except up to Tyrese is where they are like, nah, you know what, we don't want to do that. I also saw Patty Mills' name out there possibly being involved in a deal for the Sixers and James Harden, part of a package there in return for the Nets. Uh, Patty Mills have enough left in the tank to help the Sixers down the, down the stretch as well? Yeah, I think so. I uh, definitely, I think he could provide a similar thing to kind of what Seth Curry does, probably not quite as prolific, but he's a great off ball, you know, a guy to have around star players when you have Joel. And if you get James too, obviously you want to 
give them as much space as possible. And Patty Mills is still a guy that defenses have to respect. He still can, you know, knock it down from the long range at a, at a long clip. So that would be, if, if that was a, a thing that came through, that'd be a nice throw in for the Sixers to kind of help offset some of the losses that they would probably incur in the trade. With with the idea that you you think you could get them in the offseason, look, I know there's tampering and I know that all that, all that other stuff exists, but like James Harden, I think knows Daryl Morey pretty well, and I think Daryl Morey knows James Harden pretty well. So the hunch that James Harden might be available in the offseason either way, I, I think is a good one to go on. So with that being said, if you're Daryl Morey and you want to get him right now, is Green and Simmons? Do you think that's enough of a fair deal? to get James Harden back? Would it be you know, something along those lines? What do you think is the fair deal, realistic deal, that would be on the table right now? I think that would be fair if you threw in uh, some draft compensation along with it. Danny Green's a guy, you know, a veteran guy that they could bring in, fill in immediately, would help them on the perimeter defensively where they where Brooklyn struggles, would help fit, space the floor around, obviously, uh, Durant and Kyrie and Ben if he's there. And then, you know, the, the Nets obviously have the better player out of the two in, in Harden. So they, I think they would want, you know, whether it's Philadelphia's first round pick in the upcoming 2022 draft, a future compensation. But if it's a, a situation where the Nets decide they want to pull the trigger for fear of losing him for nothing outright over the offseason, which I think is a legit fear. He could have signed an extension with them last offseason. He decided not to. That kind of flew under the radar a little bit until obviously they hit these choppy waters and now it's a – a big talking point. So I think where there's smoke, there's fire. And there really is a chance he leaves, uh, you know, Brooklyn over the off season. And at that point, you know, why not maybe just get something back for him, like a young guy and Ben, uh, a couple like a veteran and Danny and, and some, some draft picks that you could either use or flip for, you know, more help around those guys in another deal. Do you think this deal gets done by the deadline? Do you think James Harden will be traded for Ben Simmons by the deadline? Uh, I don't, it would be exciting, obviously, and, and, and fun. And it would, at a, a whole level of intrigue for the rest of the season. But I just feel like there's too much to, you know, the two sides have their own thoughts of why this might or shouldn't happen. You know, I think the Nets think they still have a really legitimate shot to win the title this year once Durant gets back and is healthy and, and Harden's healthy and Kyrie's, even if he's still part-time, I think they think they have those three, they have a shot. And the Sixers are looking at it, like we said, like, hey, if we think we could land him in a few months, why are we going to give you A, B, and C instead of just waiting, keeping those guys, and then adding him for nothing? I just think there's too much to too too much distance between those two viewpoints to settle by you know tomorrow afternoon. Uh, just a little off the wall here for a second. Why do the Sixers suck against zone defense? Why why are they so terrible? Why why is that going on? That's a that's a great question, Mark. And my dad texted me the same thing after the game the night. It was he said he was like, "Your young youth basketball teams knew how to beat a zone defense better than the Sixers," and <laughs> You know, Doc Rivers has never really given a, a direct answer. Obviously, he was asked about it. And we saw it again last night in that Suns game. They threw a yeah. little stone. But, you know, I, I don't know. It seems pretty fundamental. But there's there's something there that, there that they struggle with for sure. I was beating that zone in CYO, Michael. I'm telling you. It's a guy on the foul line, two shooters. It's You know? Be, exactly. You know. Exactly. Uh, now, uh, staying with the Sixers team for right now, Tyrese Maxey, how good can this guy be? How, like, what's the ceiling for a guy like Tyrese Maxey, you think? I think we're talking all-star, potentially a perennial all-star, uh, Mark. If you look around the the NBA, and he's already gotten so much better this season. He has pretty much everything you want in a point guard other than size. He's obviously not, like, super tall. But, you know, his shot has already improved drastically. His playmaking and decision-making has improved this season. Super quick, a great finisher around the rim. He's really proficient in the pick and roll, and he's getting better in that. He's good defensively. He's not great, but for his size, he he puts in the effort. He has the quick footwork laterally. He can stay in front of guys. He doesn't give up on a play. Almost like Matisse, we see some plays where he gets beat and comes up with the block from behind. So I know the organization loves him. Everyone you know in the front office and the coaching staff loves him. His teammates rave about him to us. Basically, after every game, every time someone's asked about him, they talk about how hard he works uh, and how high his ceiling is. So to me, he's a, he's a guy that in a couple of years we could see making an all-star team you know, right alongside Joel. Uh, Michael Kasky, Blomain, CBSSports.com. I was reading your article a couple of weeks ago. Deals that don't involve Ben Simmons. And the first name I saw that I liked was C.J. McCollum. Obviously, that's not happening. What What's another deal that could be out there that you see the Sixers making by the deadline to maybe get that other guard that Doc Rivers was talking about? Yeah, that, it's interesting. Maybe, you know, a guy like Eric Gordon in Houston, he's not necessarily a point guard. But he's a, you know, a veteran and uh, the Rockets are in rebuild mode. He could certainly come to Philly and get some get some points. 
Kemba Walker is potentially available in New, in New York. I don't know what's happening with the Knicks, but he's on a you know a very reasonable contract for only two years. Uh, financially, something along maybe like Danny Green to bring Kemba Walker in and keep Matisse. Um, you know, there's there's definitely some things they could do. I think the buyout market will be something to keep an eye on. I know they have some interest internally about bringing Thaddeus Young back. Uh, it's a, a throwback name from the old school Sixers. Wow. Uh, currently with the Spurs, but if he's not traded by tomorrow, I think they're, they're going to reach a buyout, and he's a guy that they could bring in to you know add some depth to that team. So. Obviously, the the big thing is Simmons, but they they have their feelers out for a lot of other things to kind of shore up the ro- around the roster that they already have now. Uh, don't give me a long one on this. I know you got to run, so I just want to ask you this right out of the gate here, or not right out of the gate, right at the end of the gate. Uh, when it comes to Joel Embiid, how much can we buy into the idea of him, him being MVP of the league? Uh, absolutely, he's to me, he's hands down MVP this year. It's all about health. As long as he doesn't miss, you know, too many more games for the rest of the season, I think you could cash it. For sure. Mm. I'm, okay, good. I'm with you on that. Michael Kasky, blow man. Make sure you guys check him out. Of course, the real Michael KB on Twitter as well as CBSSports.com. Make sure you guys are following this man and following his stories about all things 76ers. Michael, always great catching up with you, man. Thank you so much. You too, Mark. Thanks for having me on, man. Absolutely. Michael Kasky, blow man, joining us on the Rothman Orthopedics guest line.